Hey, hello everybody, welcome back to another video on how to alter Magic the Gathering cards. Today we are doing this Overgrown Tomb and we're going to turn this one into a border extension. Um, just going over what I got lying around real quick. We've got our brushes, most of them are from the dollar store. Some of them are kind of old and fluffy, but that's kind of what we want. Uh, we've got a skewer to clean up the borders when we're done. we got some water on the side to clean our brushes in. We've got some sandpaper. And of course we're going to have some paints lying around. So here's some yellow that I like to use. Yellow ochre is very um, useful for the overgrown tomb. It's kind of like this green yellowy hue. So here I'm just uh, squirting out some colors. We've got some yellow, some blue, some black, some brown. Um, there's not too much red going on in the overgrown tomb art. So we're mostly sticking to like the, the colors that make green together. So yellow and blue makes green. we got lots of that. Here I am grabbing our stamp paper and uh, we're just going to roughen up the edges on this overgrown tomb a little bit just so the paint sticks a little bit better to the card. Um, just going all, all around, all four sides, kind of fast forwarding most of this because we've done it before in previous videos. Wipe off any dust that's um, that might stick on the card after sanding, kind of want to get that off. And then with that preparation done, we're going to grab this flat brush and we're going to get started. So starting off, we got some of the yellow ochre. We're going to chuck in just a little bit of black. And the black is kind of like a blue-ish hue. So if you mix that with the yellow, it'll turn out a little bit of green. Um, and we're just um, going to drop in some of that color here. Some of these darker colors on the side. Add in a little bit of blue. Um... We're not looking to match the color 100% at this point in time. We're just dropping in, um, you know, as accurately as we could, as we can for, you know, our first layer. But it doesn't have to be 100% matching the, the color that's on the card. As long as it's close enough because we're going to drop many more layers on top of this anyways. So I added in a little bit of blue, a little bit of white to uh, see if I could mix up a little bit something closer to this like um, foresty background color. Works all right. As you can see, there's still lots of uh, border shining through uh, underneath. That's because my white and my blue are quite transparent, uh, but that's okay. We're gonna add in a couple more layers and cover the whole border as we go, as we move along. And at this point, we're still not really worried about like the texture or anything or any kind of detail. We're just blocking in the background color to match what's already on the card. A little bit of a darker tone for the side at the bottom. That's where this, this kind of like uh, old wall comes in. And we're just going to take that dark color all the way to the bottom. Cover it all up. Same here on the other side. So by now our first layer is already dried. Acrylics dry pretty quickly. Um, so um, within no time we can drop in our second layer. Just finishing up this left side. Before going back to our lighter colors to, to do it all again. Once is not enough. Here I am just gently tapping in the colors that's left on the brush. And as you can see, with this second layer, um, the border is starting to disappear, disappear, like the original border on the card. And it's, uh, it's really starting to look like um, we're getting somewhere. Going back into our lighter colors, some whites, a little bit of blue, a little bit of yellow, makes green. And uh, just touching in that color here at the top, this uh, foresty greenish glow. Still not looking for any detail, still blocking in. Dipping a little bit more into the yellows here on uh, on this side of the card because this is where the the light on the original art comes from. 
So we're making that a little bit lighter. So sometimes I add in a little bit of brown just to dull the color down a little bit. This um, this brown color is kind of like a way to make your color less bright without actually turning it into any other color you want. Clean the brush with that first layer done. And with that, we're um, just going to mix up another color, uh, basically another shade of green. A little bit lighter this time, a little bit more vivid, so there's less whites involved. I'm not adding any of the brown to it to keep the colors kind of vivid. Just a tiny touch of black to darken it up. And with this layer, it's finally starting to look like the border is fully disappearing. And that's what we want. Went a little bit too light on this one. So I'm adding in a touch of brown, touch of black. You see the light spot on the card. And now I'm just adding up the darker color. Make it disappear. And there we go. So this already kind of looks like we got the, 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 the base colors right. Um, quite happy how that turned out. As a, as a first attempt to match the colors, it's not bad. Just adding in a couple of these darker shades on the, the sides where the tree branches are sticking out. Clean my brush very quickly. Add in a little bit more glow on this side of the card because that's where the light's coming from in the original art. Here we've got the tiniest brush I have. It's very small. Um, um, I grab some water and I'm dipping in this dark color that we had before. And with that, we're just going to lay in a couple of these tree trunks that are on the original art. And um, basically just adding them wherever we feel like there should be a tree trunk. Uh, get that jungly feel going. So all of these colors are slightly darker than the background color that we put on before and that's what makes them stand out. And I'm definitely making sure that the, the paint's really watery, it's kind of liquidy. Um, makes it easy to lay in these, um, these branches. Especially because most of them are kind of thin and it's easier to paint thin things when your paint's really wet. Here I'm just touching up on this big um, big trunk on the right from the original art. I'm going to pull it through to go over the other side of the card. Every now and then I change up the hue a little bit with a little bit of yellow, a little bit of brown. And that makes every tree kind of stand out from one another. Um, even though trees can look similar, they are rarely exactly the same color. So the more variations you add to it, the more realistic it'll look in the long run. So every now and then a touch of yellow, a touch of white, a touch of brown. Make all these tiny little variations of the same shade of color. This is the first time I'm grabbing this bright yellow and this bright yellow in particular is like as soon as you touch it it'll mix with anything and it'll turn into green. It's also very bright. So here I'm just laying in these highlights continuing the lighting that's already on the card and I'm just with the lightest touch just dropping in super tiny details of all these plant looking things that are uh, growing on this, uh, this crumbling wall wherever they may be. Um, kind of trying to match the texture um, that's already on 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 the card itself and um, just trying to copy it so that it blends with the side of the card that we're actually painting. And 
and these touches are super light barely any paint actually falling off the brush very minimal made the color a little bit brighter for round two touching up the same parts but just with a slightly brighter hue as if the um, there's some plants and leaves and stuff that, that catch a little bit more light than others so that variation is what makes makes things look real dropping in some highlights here at the bottom too while we're at it nothing too detailed just yet we'll get to that later just indications of what what it's going to look like eventually Here I'm grabbing a little bit of red for the first time. Um, trying to make this color or this hue a tiny bit more orangey rather than green. Um, it'll still be mostly green, but just with a slight, slight autumn-y touch to it. Same thing, super light touches. Every, you know, we don't want to overdo it. Just a couple highlights here and there. But you don't want to cover all the leaves that you've already dropped in or all the bushes you've already dropped in just parts of them that's what makes them stand out and we'll do the same on the other side the other side is a slightly different tone um, so we're making even though we're working with the same color, we're making variations of that same color. The left side is a, is a little bit more green, whereas the other side is a little bit more blue. So we're um, mixing the colors as we go, making small variations. Oh, I knocked over my camera. Don't worry, it'll be back up upright soon, I think, I hope. Am I going to fix it? I should fix it. It happens sometimes. All right, there we go, all fixed. So I've got this um, brownish white kind of color and that's more of the color of these rocks and stones and stuff that are coming from this crumbled wall. And only the very top of that wall gets a little bit of light. So we're just touching up, giving the indication of these uh, these um, these stones catching a little bit of light from the left side but we're not actually painting all the bricks that are in the wall just the very top ones everything else is too dark just uh, very light horizontal touches going left and right and our touch is so light with this brush as soon as only a little bit of paint falls off that's usually enough we definitely not trying to smudge anything up or anything. It's like literally we let the brush graze the card and then whatever paint falls off, that'll be our brick. Here we go into some shadowy colors. And I was kind of thinking of uh, continuing the, the rocks and bricks theme along the left side of the card. So where I just dropped in some highlight on... Um, the bottom of that every highlight or with a little bit of space in between I'm dropping in this shadowy color and that kind of gives them uh, just a little bit of shade in the bottom where you know where the rock is sitting sitting into the grass and and that'll be a little bit darker because the rocks on top So with this done, this is going to be, um, you know, obviously the composition is mostly done by the original artist uh, itself. But um, as we as we fill in the detail extending over the borders, uh, this is kind of what the composition is going to be looking like. And from here on out, it's mostly just um, filling in the details. So here I'm just dropping in a couple of leafy things, tree trunky things. And the good thing about painting um, original art that's like very... Um, very very wild and like uh, nature like is that it's really hard to do things wrong 
Um, cause nature grows like in all kinds of strange ways and, uh, it's really easy to make it look, uh, credible. Whereas if you're doing like, um, you know, trying to paint like architecture or something like that, it's all very measured and it's really hard to, um, to, to, to get right and look credible and stuff. There's things like perspective and everything is measured out and there's proportions. But if you're painting nature stuff, which is what I like, like this, you could just drop in leaves and trunks wherever you want because, you know, nature doesn't really care about where it's going to grow as long as there's like light and stuff so it's easy that way uh i got distracted we got some uh some highlight colors here and i'm just dropping in some of this moss and it's very bright yellow green um more yellow than green but within the setting of the card it kind of looks like it's green and just uh very light touches just tapping 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 and that's what makes the the, the hairy moss kind of texture um, definitely not really uh, making any like pulling strokes or anything like that. It's literally just tapping the brush. Here you got a little bit of pink, dropping some highlights highlights on these rocks, catch a little bit of light. We're going to be covering them up and blending them more later on as we go. But I felt like they deserved a little bit more of a highlight. So I think I cleaned the brush and after our highlights, this is what I usually do. Like I do highlights for a little bit and then I instantly switch to like a shadowy color and I go back to those same spots and just a little bit lower than where I dropped the highlights is where I dropped the shadow. And here I'm using this shadowy color to split up some of these rocks and kind of like break them into two. Super thin. I'm making sure my brush is like very chiseled, very sharp, and then just horizontal strokes to lay in the shadow color in these rocks and make them uh, make them sit in something because that's what the shadow colors do they kind of like um they give the 3d vibe you know like it's sitting in the grass below or in the moss below the light will strike the top of the rock but it'll create a little bit of a dark um space underneath that rock and that's what we just filled in here i grabbed a super fluffy old brush this brush is super old and um, I like it because it's super hairy and all the, the brush hairs are like all over the place. And that is perfect for when we're trying to paint little bushes. So I got a fairly highlight color um, and I'm just very lightly tapping in all these brushes and whatever or all these uh, all these bushes. And then whatever paint falls off that brush, that'll be our, our bush. And there's no like, you know, math involved, just a super uh, and definitely not like painting all the leaves uh, separately it's just like you, you you very gently touch the card with this hairy brush and just bush, bushes will just fall off of it and we do that all over I think I kind of let myself go a little bit and even though the original art isn't very uh, lively or leafy at all the end result of this altar is going to be quite um, blooming I'd say because it kind of let it let all these bushes fall off the brush and they ended up being way more numerous than I originally intended but that's fine I had fun and we use the same kind of strategy where we do highlights first and then wherever our highlights are going to be just below that we're going to drop in some shadows and we'll do that all around the card same technique, just very gently tapping. And whatever paint falls off the brush, that'll be our bush. It's starting to look like something. I want to drop in a couple more highlights, so I'm grabbing some yellows, a tiny bit of red for that autumn -y, um, like an autumn kind of vibe. And same as we talked about before, the more you can kind of make different variations of the same color, the more you make every individual bush stand out. Leaves have different colors. Not every green is the same green.
And that's what we're doing right now. Basically just making different shades of the same color. Drop in some leaves. Mix it up again. Slightly different hue. Drop some more in. Until it looks credible. And this is where I kind of let myself go, like things are getting really jungly. I had way too much fun painting these bushes. Here I'm chucking in a little bit of blue. We're still working with a green, but now it's more like a blue kind of green. Um, yeah, just different variation again. A little bit more shady looking. A couple more of these very dark ones at the bottom. Because these are really close, perspective-wise. And things that are closer to you need a higher contrast. So I'm making these very dark. Ended up covering all those rocks we painted earlier, but that's fine. Here I'm going back to our very small brush, and I covered up so much of these tree trunks that I'm just giving these tree trunks another touch um, that we did at the very start of the video. They almost all disappeared because I was too too busy painting all the leaves. So we're just going to go back and drop in some more make them reappear. Once again the paint's really thin. Um, I added some water to it to make it really thin and that'll uh, make it easier to paint these very thin things. Just touching up a little bit of this texture on the wall same thing, I covered it all with bushes, so went back, dropped in a couple of these shadowy colors, give it more like a, a wall-like texture. Here we've got a very bright yellow, and like I said earlier, the closer things are to you, the higher the contrast needs to be, but also the more vivid the colors are going to be. So I grabbed some really bright yellows, I'm just dropping in this here at the bottom to make them a little bit brighter than they are on the original card art itself. And that'll make them appear like they're closer. Look at those, those are real bright. Here I've got a different brush, and we're just going to drop in a, a little bit of this uh, very wet, I added lots of water, of this yellow that's going to be our sunlight shining through. So as you can see on the original art, there's a little bit of sunlight shining through the leaves, and you can see this glowy kind of yellow. This is actually kind of hard. What I'm doing is I'm grabbing one brush, and I'm dropping in a little bit of yellow, and then I use a clean, dry brush straight after it to kind of like... Um, um, smooth it out. So this is my one brush, layer in some color and then take a dry brush and then try to kind of erase it but some of it will stay on the card and they'll get this glow effect. Adding in a little bit of white, we do this multiple times to get the glow that we really want. Just a little bit here and there. And then with the clean brush, dry brush, smooth it out. So this is where um, the video is about to cut out. Um, my battery ran out, <laughs> so I can't actually show you the end of this uh, this altar. I think what I did is just like put a couple more leaves on top of this glow to make it more look more real, and I cleaned up the borders with uh, with a toothpick, and that's about it. So most of the work was already done, anyways. As always, uh, I hope you learned something new about altering magic cards, like um, how to paint leaves or um, yeah, how to do border extensions in general. Uh, if you liked the video, please leave a like. If you want to see more of this content, um, yeah, be sure to subscribe and see you soon.